Today on Car Keys Reviews, I'm going to be looking at a Platinum Ana player. This is going to be the final week for Car Keys Reviews Fan Edition until Overwatch League comes back. But for the future, when you want to enter, you just need to tweet out hashtag Car Keys Reviews and I'll take a look at it like this. And I'll randomly choose one. So with that, let's get it started. This gameplay is submitted by Cosmo, a Platinum level Ana. To begin, your playstyle and positioning as Ana depends on what your tanks are running, and if there are any flankers on the enemy team. Your team is Sigma and Rhine, double shield, and the enemy doesn't have any sort of dive or flankers, which means you can play close to medium range, staying somewhat near a wall, but taking advantage of your shield to poke enemies. So right out the gate, you can come up much closer and play on the left side wall here, so you can one, improve your healing accuracy since you're closer, Two, you won't be obstructed by the red bus for line of sight, as you can see right now. You know, some missed opportunities right here and some healing shots. And three, if your team decides to move forward and engage, you are right behind them. Like, if you're behind this bus from this positioning at this far away, the moment your tanks move past that wall, you're going to lose line of sight of them for a few seconds, which can cost them their life. You have to be able to react to what your tanks are doing. So right now, again, hug closer to either the right side of the wall, no need to play at your spawn doors. An engagement breaks out, your team gets shattered, and this is where I would gamble and immediately go for a sleep dart on the enemy Rhine because most of your team was on the ground. A lot of enemy Rhines get greedy and go for immediate fire strikes or swings after landing a huge ult, so there was an opportunity there to nullify a lot of the damage with your sleep. Luckily your Mora didn't get shattered, so she keeps everyone up and you move forward, and it looks like you win the fight. Now as we skip ahead, uh, the classic three, four of you guys are on the payload here, which is definitely not necessary. Only your Ash and Sigma are up front taking space from the enemy, and that's the correct play. Like, you can be on cart, but your Rhine and Mora should definitely be further up. Not much you could do there, except maybe encourage your Rhine to move forward a little bit to help control some space. Now as the team fight breaks out, you have your nano boost, and I think you should have used it there on your Reinhardt. Reinhardt is a great nano target almost 90% of the time unless there's nobody in front of him because it'll take space, his swings will hurt, he'll build up his shatter super fast. And yeah, your Reinhardt was in the thick of things. There was a lot he could have done there. He didn't have shatter until the end, but like giving that nano, you know, five seconds earlier would have helped him get it a little faster and he might have been able to turn the fight around for your team. It turns out the enemy McCree pops his high noon and kills most of you guys. So you have to reset now. Missed opportunity with the nano there. If I could offer one piece of advice for every aspiring Ana player when they question whether they should use a nano boost or not, my answer is almost always just use the nano. It builds fast, it's not like a graviton surge where you have to really think too much about it. Like if a team fight's breaking out, just use it. And if it was a bad nano, that's okay, at least you learn for next time. So as the next team fight comes out, this is when you decide to use it, which is good. You can see how much pressure it applies. Your Ryan gets a big shatter, counter charge, but you can see your Ryan is being alpha. He's swinging. The enemy Ryan has to back up with the shield up. And I like that aggressive splash wall anti-nade there. Unfortunately, it didn't connect, but that was the correct play there. If you get that splash nade behind that Ryan shield and he's purple and anti your team has a much better chance of securing the kill on him. Good stuff. I have the audio muted, but I think you heard the flanking McCree. Great sleep on him. Now... The way you executed this with double shots here, I think you got really lucky that the McCree rolled that way and you landed both. The higher percentage play would be to splash a nade either to the left or right wall and then shooting a scope shot into him during the wake up animation or shooting an unscoped shot on like the, the bottom of his hitbox there and splashing the nade immediately. Now as we move on, you try to help your Ash by pressuring the Brig, you throw a nade at her, that's all right. And then you see an Ash in your peripheral vision uh, this one's a bit tough. Uh, she ends up dynamiting to finish you off after getting a nice headshot. I, I hardly saw her on my screen too, but I guess the only thing you can really do in the future is just be more aware and, you know, check your peripheral vision. Since you were out of the fight and dealing with that McCree earlier, right? You kind of lost track of where everyone is on the enemy team. And the Ash kind of snuck up on you. If you ever have to leave or run away from a team fight to deal with something else and you come back, make a mental check of where all your teammates are, who's alive on the enemy team, and make sure that no one can sneak up on you like that. So as your team rounds the corner on the third phase, uh, you're pocketing the Rhine, that's fine, and you come around to this right side behind these boxes. I'm okay with this positioning, uh, this is fine. You could play closer to that wall to your left, but this is not bad. The moment your team rounds that right corner deep, you have to move forward though, or else you're gonna lose line of sight. And it looks like you do just that as your team is moving forward, they round the corner, you're moving up, so that's really good. Your team has control, so the enemy is going to be coming out of their spawn doors. If I were you here, I'd stay scoped in either to the left or to the right. You turn around to the right, 
don't really get too much value on the nade there, but this is all you really can do at this point, where you just stay scoped in to heal the team, but uh, you're kind of exposing yourself to the left angle. Your biggest threat from this distance is Ash, and since Ash is out that left door, you should actually be hugging the left side so that she doesn't have line of sight on you. But that's all right, you survive, and it looks like your team finishes this round strong with a lot of time in the time bank. The biggest takeaway so far with positioning wise is to always recognize the biggest enemy threats. They don't have any flankers, so you just have to be careful of scoped in ashes dealing a ton of damage to you from a distance or playing too close to get shattered by the enemy Rhine. So starting on defense, your positioning here is up on the high ground. I usually don't play up here because of Hanzo and Widowmaker's sniper threats. That's the biggest thing that could take you out from this range. I usually just hold default on the ground near the back of hotel to play around the shields. It gives me the most optimal protection. Luckily, nobody on the enemy team is running Hanzo or Widowmaker. They do have Ash, but she has damage drop off from this distance, so it's not too bad. Because you have Moira and nobody is critical right now, I would actually focus more on trying to poke the enemy team and pressure them and deal DPS at this early phase of the round. One, it obviously builds your ult charge, and two, it really makes the enemies play a lot more passive. Because you're just poking them constantly, Like it makes such a big difference, Azana. Your team killed two earlier, but then they killed your Mora, and your Mora has a farther spawn, so you have to play a bit more defensive here to keep your team up until your Mora comes back. You guys will be actually at a 5v6 disadvantage based on spawn distances. So you're doing a good job here, just healing. Uh, you went for a very risky nade here because uh, the enemy does have two shields as well, the Rhine Sigma, and you did manage to land a big anti, but it's pretty low percentage based on that straightaway angle. The enemy Lucio picks off your Echo and you guys are going to be at a 5v6 disadvantage, so you know the enemy wants to engage. In my mind, I know they have a Bastion, so I would go for the sleep on the Bastion, which you do right there, but I would not have thrown the nade just like that. You didn't get anything out of hitting just the Moira. Because you're at a 5v6 disadvantage, you might need to hold on to the nade a little bit longer to get either a big purple or to use it a bit more defensively to keep your team alive to stall for your Echo to come back. The enemy Ryan isn't checking for you and you had an opportunity to sleep him right there a little bit earlier when he rounded the corner, then your Ryan has it shattered. You could have probably went for a huge play if you got that off. Little missed opportunity there, and then the Ash sneaks up on you and cleans you up. If you were to play that a little bit differently, other than that sleep dart, I probably would have rotated to the right side, like up the little stairs there on the high ground and up the other side of the window, or potentially drop down from the window back to your spawn side and play there defensively, especially when you're on your back foot. It gives yourself a bit of a safer angle to heal your tanks from there. Not much you can do here. You sleep the bob, the enemy kills two of your teammates, they drop the beat, you guys lose this fight and you have to retreat, so I'll skip ahead to the next fight. So off the bat, your McCreek picks off the enemy Ash, your Reinhardt's a little low and you panic and throw a nade there. You might not have needed to in hindsight because your Mora had Coalescence up and you could have just kept firing shots into the Rhine to keep him up, which would have saved your nade and then you would have had that nade available for when the Rhine shattered and you could have followed up. A little unrelated, but a lot of people ask me, hey Kark, you, you know, when do you stay scoped in and when do you scope in as Ana? And from that distance that you were just at, you were shooting a lot of unscoped shots, but if I were you, I would have stayed scoped in there because one, you guys had a numbers advantage, and two, nobody is really threatening to kill you at that point because they do have a flanker in Genji, but he wasn't actively going for you because he was in front of you, like he wasn't flanking behind you. You usually just stay scoped in as Ana when you don't have any threat of dying because staying scoped in is naturally just gonna give you a lot more value than unscoped because you're more accurate and it's a hit scan versus projectile. As the enemy is walking forward, you have to immediately nano your Ryan right there and then sleep the bob right after. Unfortunately, you couldn't block the shatter and you guys lose the fight. Moving on. You're doing normal Ana things, you know, just staying scoped in, unscoped, healing some shots. I would probably just stay scoped in at this distance, right? No threats, once again. You do scope in here, can't heal the Sigma in time, pocketing the Rhine as much as you can, throw the nade, and then drop your nano on him immediately, which is good. Here, instinctively, you've got to learn to sleep dart, and this is a mechanical thing. Reinhardt Charge is the perfect time to go for a sleep dart because it's predictable and it can save your teammate. It's one of those instincts you have to drill into your head, so the fact that I'm mentioning it now, hopefully you'll keep it in mind next time. Your McCree pops his high noon, gets it deflected by Genji, and the Bob comes through. You gotta sleep him. Good job. Uh, not much you could do here. Just back up, heal the Echo. And as you're kiting, you have to commit to one side, either the left or the right. And I usually prefer right because of the boxes for cover. Because right now you're kind of in no man's land, right? You're right in the open. You're at risk of dying here. And obviously the higher you climb, you're gonna get punished for sitting out in the open for too long. So now you back up into the left room, which you made it out safely to. This is the best course of action based on the side you went to. This is good. You see the ash. Good quick scope. Good attempt on the sleep there. I like that. 
Nothing to say about that. You're pushing her out of that position, which is good. You see Reinhardt low, you're kind of healing him. I actually would have shot that Reaper one or two shots earlier. So actually pause for a second. Here's a little bit about target prioritization as Ana. Generally, the rule of thumb is you heal the person who was actively taking damage, doesn't have any sort of protection like a wall or shield, or they have a lower percentage health left. So earlier when Ryan was critical, when it says critical for Ryan, it's what? 25% of his health, and that's like 125 health. And he has a shield, and he's backing up, and I think your Moria was healing him. Your Reaper, however, when it says critical for him, 25% of 250 health is lower than 62.5 HP. So he's actually at threat of dying more than your Ryan, based on that context. So that's when you should have stopped shooting that Ryan for just one shot, flick to the right, heal that Reaper once or twice, and then went back to the Reinhardt. And that's enough gameplay that I've seen to get an idea of how you play and what can be improved on. So here's a summary. I think number one, you hesitate a little bit too much on nano boosts. Always better to just use it than to hold on to it. Using it can kind of validate your Ryan and kind of encourage him to go in and to help stop pushes and to create a lot of space for your team. Number two, you can scope in a lot more once you understand the threats. Scoping in is naturally going to be more accurate than unscoped shots by nature because of projectile versus hit scan. The only dangerous thing about scoping in is obviously your movement speed is compromised and you're an easy target to get headshot because you're not really moving too much. Number three, positioning should be relative to your tanks and enemies. Remember at the beginning of the game how I was like, hey, I think you could be playing a lot closer with your tanks because you have double shield. Take advantage of that. Number four, I think you could be shooting the enemies a little bit more. You play quite passive as Ana. It's very defensive style, and I think you lose a lot of innate value on Ana by playing like a heal bot and playing super defensive. For most of this game, you were paired with a Moira, and Moira can help you a lot with the primary heal. So you should be using your nades offensively as often as possible. Now for some of the good stuff, I saw you quick scope quite a few times, and I saw you go for splash nades, and those are two very big Ana mechanics, I think, that can help you win games, and you've got those down pat. So use those more often, and I'm sure you'll climb the diamond. And that's it for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the channel up here and watch the other episodes of the series down here.